Today we're going to be mixing three different kinds of concrete together. Uh, we've got our self-consolidating concrete, our pervious concrete, and our conventional concrete. We're just going to compare and contrast the three. Um, so in the end we'll have three different samples, same size, and we'll see how it turns out. For different experiments, one has an inch high side with molding on the interiors sprayed with uh, polyurethane to prevent sticking. And this is your, uh, on a much larger scale, would be for a table, uh, countertops, kitchen, kitchen countertops, uh, because they're decorative. Uh, this one is for the porous concrete, and it is made with an inch and three quarter high wall so that when we put it in there, the lid will go down and we can clamp it down to compress it, uh, which is part of uh, making the, the porous concrete. For our concrete mix table, we uh, what we did was we found out our total weight of our concrete and we divided up how many what the percentages of the sand, water, aggregate, cement and we all we always wanted 20% waste for the project so we took our percentages, added them up, got 120 then we moved over here to our poundage and we took our percentages times our total weight to figure out how much weight of each portion of uh, each part of the concrete we needed. And then over here we did our water to cement ratio for our pervious and for our conventional. concrete and you're not supposed to screed it or um, do anything to it. Only one of the things you're supposed to do to it is compress it. And in order to compress it, we have a, uh, we made a top to go on our form and we're going to put clamps on top of this to uh, compress the previous concrete down and make it more uniform and so it'll hold a little better. We took these off by hand using a screwdriver, and then we used a flathead screwdriver to uh, pry open the uh, formwork off the side, the molding for our, uh, our uh, self-consolidating countertop. We did that. We took these off, and our concrete came out pretty good. Um, you can see that it's really smooth, and it. We really didn't have to do anything to it. You can't trowel it. Um, we just let it set up for three days and this is the shape it took. And it's really detailed and really uh, 
flat. Uh, after three days of letting our other sample, just our conventional 4,000 PSI concrete set up, we troweled it a couple times, uh, we edged it um, in order to uh, keep it off the uh, formwork as much as we could, and then we took it out of the formwork, and you can see that the bottom side of it is really smooth from the melan melamine uh, board that we put it on, and the top has just got a normal troweled finish. Uh, you see where we pulled a little bit too much there. Um, next, we did our porous concrete, our pervious concrete, my bad, um, and we're hoping that uh, we're going to test it and see how the porosity of it to see if it'll uh, let water flow through it or not. We took it out of the formwork and uh, we tried to keep as much similar aggregate as possible throughout the, uh, the mold. And it looks like our previous concrete is uh, quite porous. Uh, all the water, not all the water made it through, but uh, most of the water f can't, uh, spilled through the uh, sample, and uh, that's a good, good sign. Uh, at the conclusion of our um, concrete pour with our three samples, um, our conventional concrete turned out pretty well. Our previous concrete turned out really well for the first time doing it. We, uh, it actually had really good porosity. And then our self-consolidating concrete didn't take much work, but uh, it was neat to see how you don't have to trowel it at all, and it just kind of levels out on its own. And in conclusion, we, uh, we, we designed these two mixes ourselves, and this one you, we used a bag of countertop mix to, to make, but we feel pretty good about how our uh, samples turned out.